beautiful ones. Um, I want to talk to you about power today, um, especially given the um, climate that we're in at the moment, um, you know, with the whole coronavirus debacle. So here in Costa Rica, where I live, um, the coronavirus is on week seven now, I believe. And um, we haven't luckily been in a lockdown situation like so many other countries in the world, but we have had a lot of our human rights restricted and I feel violated. So things like, you know, taking walks at the beach, going to restaurants, going to the supermarket um, in a normal manner, you know, with your kids or not having to wait in line until someone's left for you to be able to enter wearing masks, um, not being able to drive on certain days, curfews, all that kind of thing has been imposed upon us because of this virus. And um, I'm not sure about yourselves, but there is a lot of controversy out there. And um, to be honest, I never bought into the virus from the beginning. I studied virology in quite a lot of depth for three years when I did my naturopathy diploma. Um, about 10 years ago. So, you know, I've got a bit more of a basic understanding of how viruses work. And to be quite frank with you, this coronavirus is just a virus, you know, just like a flu virus or just like a sickness bug virus, you know, you usually come into contact with them. Most of the time you won't get it. And if you do, you get it, you pass it and you're okay. Only if you are really old or infirm or have something really deeply awful going on and dying, would you ever perish from it. So I feel that the whole lockdown was a huge overreaction and by the governments and then huge hysteria um, by the public, because obviously we trust our governments implicitly. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to relate it to the birthing world because um, the same happens in the birthing world. Women know their own power if they have given birth naturally. And you know they've known it since time began until um, they were taught to fear birth to such an extent that they thought they couldn't do it without the aid of usually a man or um, certainly huge interventions and they just didn't trust themselves anymore. And this happened, you know, from the 14th century when women were deemed as witches and burned alive at the stake for um, encouraging women to give birth in their own power, for midwifery, for even healing um, others through their knowledge, through their knowledge of mother nature, through using herbs and homeopathy and all sorts of other remedies, but because they weren't qualified and because they were a threat to the church at the time, and at the time the church was the, the ruler of the earth, they were literally hunted down and killed. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about power really, because even in times like this, coronavirus being the most obvious right now for all of us, we may feel that we have no power, that we have to just go along with whatever the governments tell us to do, whatever the deep state has ordered, even though most of it makes absolutely no logical sense whatsoever. Um, you know, things like you can't go to the beach, but you can go to the supermarket. Um, the virus can be killed just through washing your hands, but, it, you know, it, that's it, it's, it's, it's deadly otherwise. And I think most people have now woken up and realized that this has been massively blown out of proportion and actually the thing to fear is the fear itself and the way we've been controlled, the way we've been manipulated and um, the way the powers that be want us and need us to feel out of control and fearful. Um, and it really is the same parallel in the birthing world as I, as I see it. I think the birthing world is in crisis most women um, are absolutely terrified of the prospect of having a natural birth. They don't believe that they'll be able to survive it. They believe their body won't be able to do it. They believe the pain will be so unbearable that they can't do it without any aid. But if you logically think about it, you know, human beings have been around 300,000 years. How are we still here if we're not able to do this by ourselves? Um, the patriarchal um, way of giving birth has only existed since the 60s, that's 80 years. That's not why we're all here from the last 80 years, you know? So we've got to question just like, does this make any logical sense? Um, intuitively, do you really think that you have the power to conceive, you have the power to grow this beautiful baby, but you, you don't have the power to birth a baby? 
Like, how is that suddenly even an issue? And why are you buying into the false narrative that your body is inept in some way? And don't get me wrong, I did the same thing. You know, I was terrified of birth. But I just think it's interesting to reflect on it. And the reason I want to talk about power in particular today is because I've just spoken to a dear, dear friend of mine in Scotland who has just birthed her fourth baby, naturally. It's her third home birth and her first true free birth. And I've spoken to her today. She had the baby yesterday, so she's still totally in her power bubble. And she is in ecstasy, you know? She just had the most wonderful experience but it didn't come without its fears along the way because originally she was planning on home birth with a midwife and because of the coronavirus, they took away midwife support at home. So the only other alternative she had was to go into the hospital setting, but she didn't want to do that. So she had to very quickly learn how to become empowered on giving birth, even though it was her fourth birth and she thought she was really quite well versed in natural birth and how her mammalian body worked. She still needed to do a lot of research to feel truly confident and truly empowered. And it paid off because she is just, you know, now totally aware of her power. And unfortunately, you know, she had to face the dark side. She had to face her fears. She had to go through all that to get to the light, to get to the other side, but it was worth it. And now when we were talking today um, in, a call we did on Zoom, and I'm happy to share it with you. I'll put the link below if you want to listen to it. But we both kind of um, realized afterwards that this was like a blessing, that she had to go through all her darkest thoughts and uh, biggest concerns to reach a stage where she actually thought, I'm ready to face this stuff and I'm gonna do it anyway. You know, And that's true courage. True courage isn't not being frightened. It's being frightened, facing your fears, empowering yourself, and doing it. So I'm really proud of her, and um, it just really touched me deeply because I've been on that same journey myself several times, but even more so with my latest birth 16 months ago. What I too was faced with what I thought originally was a rock and a hard place, you know? I was told about 10 days before um, I had the baby that my iron levels were perilously low and that my platelets were also low and the combination of the two meant I had a 50% chance of hemorrhaging to death, all the baby did. And I was homing, you know, planning a home birth like I had done for the last three of my babies. So I was told under no uncertain terms by my, I thought at the time, very natural um, thinking gynecologist or OBGYN that I would have to be in hospital because the risk of hemorrhaging and the need for transfusion would be extremely high and that I was irresponsible if I even humoured the idea of continuing with my home birth. So for four nights I hardly slept. I had to research the levels of my platelets, the levels of my iron. If they were indeed that dangerous I tried to up my iron and platelet levels like a crazy woman and I had to do a lot of internal soul searching as to whether I really felt that I was in grave danger because I felt great, you know? Um, I didn't feel like I was anemic, even though I was slightly. I didn't feel I was at any risk. I felt very strongly that the baby wanted to be born in our beautiful jungle home. And I felt very strongly that I did not want to go into hospital, especially a Costa Rican hospital, which is utterly archaic in the way that it treats its women. I mean, we're talking your husband or partner is not allowed to attend the birth with you, you're not allowed to eat or drink, you have to be strapped down to the bed to give birth, you can't have any control over whether you have an episiotomy or not, they often just strip you up to Pitocin, it's barbaric, it's hideous and you're powerless in that situation. And after doing a lot of soul searching and a lot of scientific study into my levels of iron and platelets, I decided that I felt much safer, far safer giving birth at home and risking it to going into a very patriarchal, misogynistic, and to me, violent, obstetric hospital setting. Um, but it was dark for a few weeks. It really was. It was very dark getting there. I was extremely worried. But once I'd made that decision to tap into my power and not listen to the outside fear-mongering sources and to just be true to what I, I really knew within myself, and thankfully, 
the experience of having had four other really excellent births because of the way I'd engineered them again, I believe. Um, I was able to have the most miraculous, beautiful, blissful birth experience. And I'm so grateful that I listened to my higher self. I'm so grateful that I didn't get scaremongered um, by the medical community that were looking after me. Um, because I was so close. I was so close. And if I hadn't had my experience and knowledge and the emotional support that I had from my friends, I don't know if I would have been able to have had the courage to ensure that I had the home birth that my baby deserved. So I want to leave you with this video just thinking about when you feel powerless, why is that? How much choice do you have in that scenario? How much can you actually influence in your life? I believe a lot, like the majority of it is down to you, how you process what's happening in the external world. That's up to you. We can't help what's happening in the external world, but we can certainly decide how we're gonna to react to it. And we are powerful, powerful beings. We mustn't underestimate what we're capable of, our imaginations and our realities. We are amazing, amazing creatures, and we mustn't doubt ourselves. So I'll leave you with that thought, my darlings. And um, if this content interested you, just click on the link below and um, you'll find some more info there. Sending you so much love. Bye beautiful mamas.